Welcome to Location, Cabrini College's weekly news program. I'm Allie Jeter. And I'm Rob Richards. Here's your news now. Cabrini's radio station celebrated its 30 year anniversary on the air this week. Alumni celebrated the radio's success and looked back on station memories in Grace Hall where they enjoyed food and drinks. Let's go to Rob to find out more about how this momentous event was celebrated. On Friday, March 30th, WYBF held its 30th anniversary reunion in the Grace Hall atrium. The evening began with delectable refreshments and warm greetings. Cabrini's radio station has undergone numerous changes, including changing from WCAB to WYBF, changing from the AM band to the FM band, as well as several name changes, from the edge to the burn, and to its present moniker, Cavalier Radio. Dr. Jerry Zurich, chairman of the communication department, gave a presentation about the history of the station, highlighting several former station managers, including the man who helped build WYBF, Frank Hogan. The reason I met Cabrini was never for the money. It was for one person. And this whole night, I mean, I appreciate your compliments. I really appreciate your friendship. But this administration needs to know what kind of gem they have in Dr. Zurich. It is this man that has kept me coming out here all these years. And when I talk to the students and the alums, it's the enthusiasm, the dedication of Dr. Zurich. So I thank you for your friendship, and thank you for having me tonight. I, uh, I learned a lot being a part of the radio station uh, when I was here as a student, and uh, one of the big fundamental uh, things that I did learn was um, how to communicate and how to work in a group setting. And being a part of the radio station, uh, definitely was a big part of that and uh, has helped me through my professional career right now. Radio is a really tough business and just be persistent. Radio, unless you're one of about five people, you really don't make that much money and you move around a lot, but you can have a lot of fun and you can use it as a springboard to different things. The main thing is enjoy your college experience. For location, I'm Rob Riches. Cheers, location. There's a new place in Wayne to check out where you can find wine and an empty canvas. The franchise Painting with a Twist has opened in town where they host regular classes, private parties, and open party events. The place where you can paint, socialize, and drink some wine. After checking out the paint with, with a twist in Wayne, you might want to grab something to eat outside as the weather is warming up and many restaurants have been opening up their outdoor dining areas. However, many restaurants along Lancaster Avenue are prohibited from having outdoor dining by Radnor Township. Restaurants like the Hogfish Bar and Grill, along with many others, are not allowed because Radnor commissioners want to keep bordering neighborhoods protected. The question remains whether Radnor should expand outdoor dining. In other local news, Lower Marion Police have reported a chain of theft and underage drinking incidents this week in Bryn Mawr. Lancaster Avenue had a lot of action as two boys were charged with underage drinking and carrying false IDs at Maloney's Pub. Further down on Lancaster, the pub, the Grog, underwent more than just a fake ID incident. After a bouncer scanned a young man's ID proving it was fake, the boy grabbed the $2,000 card reader and threw it down the alley, smashing it in pieces. The young boy then took off, running from the police. Several thefts of iron fence and a MacBook have also been reported. And that was your trip around the block. Now let's go across the nation with Rob. The New York police policy, known as Stop, Question, and Frisk, has outraged critics who believe the policy is considered racial profiling. Police have set a record high number of searches in which they've stopped and questioned people on the street. According to the New York Police Department statistics, most people stopped are black or Hispanic males. Opinions about the of whether the policy is taken too far is split amongst critics who believe stop and frisk is racist and police who believe it is justified because they claim it has taken over 800 guns off the street just this year. A tragic scene at Oikos University in Oakland, California, left seven dead and three injured earlier this week from gunshot wounds.
Police Chief Howard Jordan said the shooter was expelled from school for behavior problems after being teased for his poor English. According to Chief Jordan, the suspect went through the building randomly shooting people and systematically dragged people into a classroom where they lined up. And if they did not cooperate, he began shooting. Police say the attack appeared to be planned. The alleged shooter is currently being held without bail on several charges. A memorial service is scheduled for later this week for the students. On a lighter note, a group of firefighters in Albuquerque, New Mexico, hit the Mega Millions jackpot this week, winning $10,000. Instead of cashing in on the winnings, the everyday heroes donated part of their share to a fellow firefighter in need of brain surgery. 24-year-old Vitz Cordova, colleague and friend of the winners, was recently diagnosed with a rare and serious brain tumor. Cordova waits for specialized surgery to remove two golf ball-sized tumors from his brain. That was your trip around the nation. Now let's go to Ali for your trip around the world. The resignation of James Murdoch from his role as chairman of UK broadcaster B Sky B has come on the heels of scandals including eavesdropping on crime victims, politicians, and celebrities in search of stories. The move was an effort by Murdoch to distance the company from the phone hacking scandal at the news of the World newspaper, who listened in on conversations of a girl who was later on murdered. Murdoch denies knowing about the scale of phone hacking at the paper. London police are still investigating the scandal, and dozens of people have been arrested but not yet charged. If people think U.S. unemployment rates are were scary, they should consider the situation in Spain. The number of job seekers in Spain rose for the eighth month in a, in a row and has hit a record high of about five million. The Labor Ministry suspects Budget Minister Cristobal Montoro plays a major role in unemployment and the country's rising debt. His most recent package consisted of spending cuts and tax increases. Strikes have been taking place across the country as half of the youth remains unemployed and rates are expected to rise further this year. Finally, an inspiring story has emerged out of Afghanistan, where 17-year-old Sadaf Rahimi will become Afghanistan's first female Olympic boxer. Rahimi has faced many difficulties where she was once not allowed to fight under Taliban rule, and she now faces anonymous threats. She also trains for only an hour a day in a poor and limited gym. Fortunately, this wild card won't let any obstacles keep her from the sport she loves, and we will be seeing her in the ring in London in this year's Olympic Games. And that was your trip around the world. Now let's go to Jimmy for this week's Tech Connection. This week, I was able to review Apple's new iPad. Here's my overview and first impressions. I found with the new iPad, its much improved resolution on the screen, as well as the faster graphics, lead to a much more enjoyable experience over the first generation iPad. Previously, I owned the first generation iPad, and while I liked its, the general usefulness of the, new, of the previous iPad, I found with the third generation iPad, the resolution and the pictures looked crisp, internet surfing and browsing was much faster, as well as the connectivity to Wi-Fi was much improved over the first generation. Biggest thing that I like about the third generation iPad is the fact that it has an improved resolution screen, four times the resolution of your HDTV. Now, this resolution comes well in handy if you're reading a web page with lots of text or if you're looking at pictures taken on your iPhone, a rather high resolution camera. The one small thing that I noticed about the iPad, which I didn't like, is that it gets hot in the lower right quadrant because of the batteries located there, and it heats up after using a video streaming service like Netflix or you're playing a game for a long time. The new iPad is a must buy for anyone who wants a second screen to surf the web, look at their high resolution photos, do content creation such as taking high definition video, making and edit, editing, mo editing movies on iMovie, as well as GarageBand and using music, and many, many, many more apps on the App Store. It has been my pleasure to bring you all the top technology news this season. This will be my last broadcast as Technology Anchor. Be sure to stay plugged in right here next week for your latest tech news. Thank you very much, Jimmy, for your brilliant technological insights, and best of luck with your future endeavors. And we will definitely miss you. Now let's go to Mary-Kate McCann for this week's sports update. After Tuesday's 5-4 win against Gwen and Mercy College, the Cabrini College men's tennis team remains undefeated in the conference. The Cavaliers will welcome Newman University to the Cabrini courts on April 13th. The third consecutive non-conference loss for the Cabrini College women's lacrosse team drops the record to 3-7 overall and 3-1 in CSAC. The Lady Cavs will return to CSAC play on Thursday to face Centenary College. 
As the MLB season prepares to kick off, let's take a look to see what Cabrini students around campus think about the Phillies. Uh, my favorite player in the Phillies is uh, Ryan Howard. You know he's been slumping lately. He has an injury right now. He's my favorite player. Uh, Shane Victorino. Uh, he's a good outfielder, and I just like the way he plays. Favorite player, uh, although he's not looking too good right now, uh, big guy Ryan Howard, number six. I've been to, I actually go to about a couple of games each year. Baseball is my favorite sport, but I do like to go down to the ballpark and catch a couple of games every year. Um, the atmosphere. I just love uh, watching all Phillies teams. I actually really enjoy going to Flyers games, but um, getting to go to baseball is a lot of fun as well. Um, probably been to 15 games at the at Citizens Bank Park, and it's it's a lot different than the old uh, Veterans Stadium, where it was just kind of just the big like cookie cutter uh, AstroTurf football any stadium. But uh, yeah, Citizens Bank is just it's just a good time, and you get to see a great team. So. MLB home opener for the Phils will take place this Monday, April 9th at Citizens Bank Park. Thanks, Mary-Kate. Now let's go to Felicia with your entertainment news. Levi Johnson, Bristol Palin's baby daddy, is expecting another child. He recently told TMZ that he did not plan to knock up his new girlfriend, but he is very excited to be expecting for a second time. He also admitted that he has not seen his son with Palin in over a month. Also, it has been confirmed that Ashton Kutcher will be playing the late Apple co-founder Steve Jobs in the biopic film titled Jobs. This film will start pr production in May. Well, that's all I have for your entertainment news. Back to, to the news desk. Thanks for staying tuned in with us this week. I'm Allie Judah for Location Weekly News. And I'm Rob Richards. Have a great break, Cabrini.